Uh, you go down a one way with those angled uh, parking things, um, force the park forwards. This gives me a good idea of where my front lip starts. All right, we're back at it again with another taser video. Today we're gonna go over how to map the recently added auxiliary buttons, the specific functions available with the taser on my 2015 manual Challenger Scat Pack, and also use the new engine fan control feature. There are a few requirements before we get started. I'll place a card in the upper right corner for each of these that I have a video on. For the engine fan activation, you must have the Z Automotive Taser installed in the ODB2 port. You must have the latest firmware at the time of this video, that firmware version is 2.2.8-121416. For the aux button portion of this video, you must also have the auxiliary buttons installed. Got a video on that. It didn't come out as good as I expected, so I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use it or not. If you guys want to see it, just put a comment below and I'll post it up anyway. Had some camera issues that day. Didn't get the detailed footage that I wanted to but it still may be useful let me know in the comments below if you guys are interested in seeing that one also for the auxiliary buttons I'll drop a link in the description below to show you where this module can be purchased from let's start with the engine fan control with the ignition on so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get into that run position there You'll notice I have the uh, SRT pages enabled. Uh, I've got a video on that uh, coming soon, hopefully. Press the right arrow, so that would be this one, and the cruise control cancel button at the same time. And there we go. This is going to be especially useful for those of you waiting in line at the drag strip, wanting to cool down your engine. The cool thing is, he's uh, also built in a feature to automatically turn this off if the battery drops below 11 volts. And this, you cancel, turns that off. Just takes a couple seconds for it to turn off. So no requirement to go into the audio menu. Right button, cancel. You'll hear the fans running. And fans off. So if you're in the audio menu, you can actually see what's going on. But if you're, it's not a requirement to be in the audio menu to use this function. All right, let's do the button remap. So at the time of this video, you can map the uh, buttons to any of the eight light shows. The back, the front, auxiliary cameras and video, line lock, custom drive modes, ESP kill, force rear wheel drive, and launch mode. Keep in mind, not all these functions will pertain to all vehicles. And last but not least, Joe's constantly adding new features and new functionality. So the best way to know what's available is to check out the latest operations manual on zautotech.com. So uh, I use light shows a lot at car shows. So we're gonna map a light show to one of these buttons. Um, I was hoping we could map fan control, but that doesn't look like to be an option at this time. So with a dash in the audio mode, just make sure we toggle down to audio. All right, it's got the last action we performed, which is turn the fans off. All right, we're gonna press and hold the left arrow, which is the back button here. And we're gonna press the button we wanna remap. So let's try that right now. We're gonna hit aux one. No function. Light show three. Light show four. So you can scroll through the functions by continuing to press the aux button. So we're going through the light shows right now, the availables. I got a rear camera, which I don't have hooked up. Actually, no, we do have the backup cam hooked up. Um, aux video, line lock, custom drive mode. So that's if you set the custom drive mode in your, uh, your custom menu on the screen here. Launch mode, no function. Okay, we're back to one. I like light show three. That's my favorite right there. So I'm gonna release that. All right, so we've got a program to light show three. Now I'm assuming I just press the button. We should see some, yep, there's the flashies. All right, so it looks like light show three works. All right, so for those of you who wanna do the rest of them, let's see, let's do um, light show. Don't wanna do the light show. Got a lot of light shows enabled, so. Again, you can't really button mash. You have to slowly work your way through the menus. 
So let's do line lock for that one. Oh, I should do launch mode for number two. Quick access to launch mode, always a good thing. Okay, so we got launch mode. And I really don't want line lock um, on my third button. I'd rather do the two button combo for line lock just because I feel it's safer. I know it doesn't enable as soon as you push it, but you just don't want a line lock sitting right there. So let's do the rear camera for that one just so I can give you some something to look at. And remember, just uh, for the rear camera, there is a speed limitation. Um, so if you want to have a rear camera button, uh, the speed limitation would be, I believe, somewhere between 8 and 10 miles an hour where that rear camera will just shut off. There we go, rear camera. All right, so let's see what happens when I push that button. Hey, there's the rear camera. My crappy garage door. Look at that. Turn that off. I wonder if... Uh, it says here you can do the uh, sport button. So that's down here, center stack here. You got the sport button for the scat back. It says on the 2016 and 2017 scats. All right, left arrow and tap the sport button. So here's the scoop on the remapping of the sport button. In 2015, there's no issue. So you can remap the sport button, but it will carry two functions, the sport mode and the function you remap to it. This is more for the 2016 and 2017 scat packs where that sport button goes dead when you enable SRT mode. So to sum it up, you can use it in a 2015. It'll serve two functions, but it's mainly meant for 2016 and 2017 scat packs to deal with the dead button once you enable SRT mode. Lost daylight, so uh, doing one last thing with some artificial lighting here. Put the car in the run position. We're gonna use that left button. And I'm gonna remap my auxiliary to, I wanna go to um, my front camera. I believe it is front camera. Yep, there we go. All right, I'll give you a good example of the front camera. All right, so I've got my auxiliary three button showing my reverse cam. I have a camera I purchased on Amazon for a front cam. And I changed that to my auxiliary two button. So a lot of guys who are uh, sometimes I'm forced to uh, park front ways. Uh, you go down a one way with those angled uh, parking things. I'm forced to park forwards. This gives me a good idea of where my front lip starts. You see right there in the corner is my license plate. That's my uh, snow and show bracket. So basically I just overshot my mark. Let's go back a little bit and try that again. Show up the front cam. Hopefully you guys can get a good view of this. Um, you'll see the bottom of my screen is basically a good reference for the lip spoiler. So if I'm pulling up to a parking spot, boom, right there is where I stop. You can see right there is my Stow and Show license plate. And uh, let's go take a look at exactly where we stopped. Here, let me uh, bring this down so you guys can get a good view of that camera. see where we stopped uh, within six inches of the, the stop spot all right so full controls of the cameras um, I've been mapped to the auxiliary buttons here I can go back to the rear camera if I want to looks like you need to shut off the camera by pressing the button and then Press the button to turn on the other. Turn off the camera. Press the button to turn on the other one. Yep. And reverse still works like normal. So if I want to back into my parking spot, I just put it in reverse and I back up. And that's it. So uh, if this video helped you guys out in any way, don't forget to drop a like. If you're stopping by for the first time, please subscribe. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. 
All right, so we've got a program to light show three. Now I'm assuming I just press the button. We should see some, yep, there's the flashies. All right, so it looks like light show three works. Now, if my question is if we push this again, does it turn it off? Yes, it does. Now my next question is, let's turn the car off. Open and close the doors. So now the car is essentially turned off. Does the aux button work now that the car is off? Press that aux button and see what happens. All right, so for this function, the car needs to be on. Let's we'll start the car up. All right, so we roll up to a car show. We park the car. The car's not moving. Brakes on. I hit my aux one button. There goes my light show three. Car's off. Light show three will continue to run. Let me get out of the car. All right, so light show three continues to run, which is great. So at the time, I didn't really understand what was happening, so I'm gonna talk over my babbling. Um, basically, if you enable the light show from the auxiliary buttons and shut the car off and leave the car, the light show and the auxiliary buttons remain functional. If you come back in the car, press the auxiliary button to turn off the light show, everything shuts off. In order to enable the light show again, you need to turn on the car. Now that it's getting cold outside and a little difficult to work on the car, if anyone out there is interested in seeing gaming on the channel, uh, I spend one or two nights a week uh, playing Gears of War right now, is the, uh, the current favorite. Um, if you're interested, drop a uh, comment down below and uh, I'll consider throwing in some gaming videos in the future. Thank <laughs> you. 